Welcome to the Elon Musk Signal Channel. For over two decades, the International Space Station, ISS, has orbited Earth, playing a crucial role in enabling NASA and other agencies regular access to low Earth orbit. However, operating the station comes at a significant cost. NASA estimates it spends around $3 billion annually on this high altitude laboratory, consuming a third of its total budget for human spaceflight activity. Recognizing this, NASA is planning to cease ISS operations by 2030. Accordingly, the station will be brought down to Earth, burning up in the atmosphere as calculated. After much speculation, NASA has officially announced that SpaceX will support the process of returning the International Space Station to Earth. Why did NASA make this choice? What are the future replacement plans for ISS? Join us as we explore in this video, operated since 1998 through collaboration among five space agencies. CSA, Canada, Europe, JAXA, Europe, NAXA, NASA, Yothais, and Rosmos, Russia. The ISS is a complex structure requiring technical contributions and close coordination and management from all participating parties. Beyond serving as an orbiting laboratory, ISS is a symbol of international cooperation in scientific exploration, benefiting all humankind. Weighing 430,000 kilograms and roughly the size of a football field, ISS remains the largest single structure ever constructed in space. Throughout its 24-year mission, ISS has primarily supported operations by American and Russian astronauts. Recent deterioration of ISS has prompted NASA and its partners to consider ending its operations by 2030. The USA, Japan, Canada, and European Space Agency, ESA, Member states have committed to operating this microgravity laboratory until 2030, although Russia, the fifth partner, has only agreed to maintain its partnership until 2028, when Roscosmos believes their technologies can still be utilized. Regarding replacement options such as boosting ISS to a higher orbit to extend its lifespan, NASA has ruled out this choice. While it may sound appealing, it carries significant risk. Besides requiring new hardware and massive amounts of fuel, the costs of developing, testing, and deploying this method are prohibitive. Moreover, moving ISS to a higher orbit doesn't fully resolve the issue. It only delays the uncontrolled re-entry to Earth and increases collision risks with other activities in low Earth orbit. With current capabilities, raising ISS altitude can only marginally extend its operational life, but doesn't remove it from the risks of low Earth orbit. This approach poses high risks for future operations in low Earth orbit since ISS cannot refuel to perform debris avoidance maneuvers. Collision between space debris and the station could pose serious danger to astronauts, potentially causing loss of control or generating more debris, thereby increasing collision risks. In early 2023, NASA officially solicited companies for a space tug design project to safely return the International Space Station ISS to Earth. Notable candidates included SpaceX and Northrop Grumman. After deliberation, NASA chose SpaceX to develop and provide America's orbital deorbiting vehicle, ensuring a safe conclusion to ISS's journey. SpaceX will be responsible for developing the deorbiting spacecraft, while NASA will oversee its operation alongside the space station throughout the mission. It is expected that ISS will break up into smaller pieces during its re-entry into the atmosphere. Thus, the spacecraft developed by SpaceX will be launched to the International Space Station and destroyed together with ISS during the process of bringing the station back to Earth. The total contract value amounts to $843 million, with launch costs for this vehicle to be calculated separately in the future. One of the biggest questions right now is which SpaceX vehicle will be used. Many speculate it will be an upgraded version of the Dragon spacecraft. However, there are several factors to consider. In 2022, NASA unveiled some technical requirements for the ISS deorbiting vehicle during a presentation. This vehicle needs to operate independently of the International Space Station for four days during the deorbiting process. Additionally, it must function normally during and after exposure to the ISS environment for at least one year. In terms of thrust, the vehicle needs enough power to deorbit the ISS while minimizing impact on the station itself. This is to ensure components of the ISS are not overstressed. To achieve this, SpaceX needs to closely collaborate with NASA to design a vehicle capable of withstanding the thrust forces during engine burns. 
This vehicle could be either a completely new design or an upgraded version of an existing spacecraft. Regardless of the type, it must successfully operate on its maiden flight and have redundancy and contingency capabilities to ensure the critical deorbiting process goes smoothly. The International Space Station is a complex structure comprising main components such as connecting trusses, modules, solar panels, and thermal radiators. Connecting truss acts as the backbone of the station, providing anchorage points for solar panels, thermal radiators, and module. Various modules create pressurized environments for countless microgravity experiments, living quarters for crews, and docking ports for visiting spacecraft. Solar panels and thermal radiators ensure energy supply and temperature control for devices on the station. During the process of bringing the ISS back to Earth, calculating the thrust of the deorbiting vehicle requires special caution to ensure the safety of this complex structure. Based on observations from the atmospheric re-entry of previous large structures like Mir and Skylab, NASA engineers predict this process will occur in three stages. First, solar panels and thermal radiators will detach from the station. Next, intact modules and the connecting truss will break apart into fragments. Lastly, individual modules will continue to break down and the connecting truss will lose structural integrity entirely. According to the plan, NASA will gradually lower the orbit of the International Space Station through both natural and active means. Natural methods utilize Earth's gravitational pull to gradually decrease the station's altitude over time. Active methods involve discarding ISS's outdated propulsion devices and then executing a series of maneuvers to safely deorbit the station. In the final phase, a new or upgraded spacecraft carrying a large amount of fuel will be used to precisely control the re-entry points of ISS fragments. After the crew safely returns to Earth, ISS operators will perform orbit adjustment maneuvers to guide ISS to a predetermined safe splashdown area in the ocean. By the end of this decade, with SpaceX's support, ISS will perform a spectacular suicide plunge into Earth's atmosphere. Choosing SpaceX to develop the deorbiting vehicle marks a significant milestone. NASA and international partners are committed to ensuring a safe transition and responsibly ending operations of the International Space Station. Beyond 2030, NASA plans to fund the development of private space stations in Earth orbit to maintain U.S. presence, with companies like Airbus and Blue Origin participating. While the private space station market is still developing, U.S. officials believe a commercial replacement station is necessary to compete with China's newer space station in low Earth orbit. Those are the noteworthy points covered in today's broadcast. Thank you for watching. Please leave your comments on this episode and stay tuned for more exciting events in upcoming episodes. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to catch more interesting videos on the Elon Musk Signal channel. Goodbye, and see you again.